The ICE awards are very important because a lot of the work done by civil engineers in London and other places is done out of sight, people don't realise it's happening, and yet the work that's being done is essential to the vibrancy and the life and the development of the city. It's a privilege. The whole thing is a privilege to visit the projects. It's a privilege because we get to go and see things that most people in London don't get to see. Not only that, we get to see the teams that are working, often in difficult conditions, often in um, hours that are not normally accepted as social, and yet these teams are enthusiastic and they are a credit to our profession. Um, St James's Square project is uh, a very complicated, one of the most complicated basement projects that I've ever known or worked on in the last 30, 35 years of my career, made even more difficult by the discovery of some rare geological defects within the subsoil and substrata. Uh, we find that the deeper we go into London and into London clay, there is bits that we do not know about and unfortunately we came across them um, on this particular site and needed a collaborative team effort from some of the best brains in temporary works. We used many, many construction techniques to overcome the project delays in response to these difficult ground conditions and effectively, in a nutshell, um, we had several hundred years of experience on the team and nobody on the team had come across anything like this in their respective um, engineering professional careers. Hence the reason why we're putting this project forward for an ICE London Award. Right, today we're standing at uh, underground in uh, a structure that was constructed by C411, which will essentially form the, the main box for uh, the new Crossrail station. Um, it's it's really amazing project because it's such such a massive structure being built in uh, in the centre of London. It's what every civil engineer dreams about building a big um, station underground. We've been to London and walked around ticket halls and always thought, how do they build this? We've got very little space. Um, we've got huge um, program challenges on the project. Uh, we are surrounded by local businesses and local residents, so our flexibility of working hours is quite limited. So with all of that, we've got to do things smarter, quicker, and more innovative. My name is Michael Bryant, I'm the Operations Executive for Canary Wharf Contractors. We're building this station because we need a third leg of our public transport offer to our estate. We also need capacity to continue growing the estate. The main innovation was the three-sided cofferdam, which was built with uh, Japanese technology on the, the temporary works, but also British engineering, which actually took that technology, refined it, made it suitable for purpose and I have to say the contractors and the consultants all knuckled, knuckled down together and people have thoroughly enjoyed delivering. It's been a very enlightened process. We're, we're now standing at roof level of, of the station. We're now seven storeys above where we were a few minutes ago at, at platform level and this is going to be a publicly open garden and we hope that this will become, as well as being an addition or if you like the icing on the cake for the, the Crossrail station here, it's going to be a destination in its own right and we just hope that it will, will do what it's planned to do, which is link the area of Canary Wharf and the business district to the, the areas to the, to the north of Poplar, etc. My name is Linda Miller. I'm the project manager for Crossrail's Connaught Tunnel Project. The fascinating thing about the Connaught Tunnel Project is we're we're bringing back to life a beautiful 135 year old tunnel that first opened in 1878 to steam trains. Getting it ready for a state of the art railway like Crossrail has presented unique challenges at, at every turn. So right now we're underneath the apron of uh, London City Airport. So one of the technical challenges in this bit of the job has been while dewatering to lower the water level while we do the tunneling works, uh, we've had to continually monitor the apron of London City Airport to ensure that it doesn't settle 
and there's no impact to their operations. One of the amazing parts of this project was going underneath the Royal Docks, which themselves were built in the late 1800s and early 1900s. We put a coffer dam down in the water, drained millions of liters out, and needed to do open heart surgery on the center part of this, of this old tunnel. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a job the whole team feels very proud to be on. I, I think that pride in the project has really brought the team together because it's also a very collaborative team. The contractor, the owner's team, central engineering, the designer, we, we've really formed as one. Well, we're um, looking at Blackfriars Bridge here. Um, it's an 1886 structure built by the son of uh, Brunel and to develop such a difficult um, structure into a new modern facility requires uh, various amounts of innovation. Blackfriars Station is undoubtedly one of the most complex projects Network Rail has undertaken in London. Um, the project had a workforce of up to 2,000 people working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for 4.5 years, supported by a very large management team and it required constant attention to ensure that the project progressed to time and programme. To have the, uh, the challenge of delivering such an iconic landmark for London has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, my name is Peter Yao. Um, I work for London Underground and I'm the project manager for this um, project, um, which is what we call PC44, Cast Science Strengthening Project. What's so amazing about this project is that uh, it's very difficult. Um, it's in the sewer and uh, it's not very pleasant down, down there. And um, we had a lot of uh, logistical uh, problems uh, we had to overcome. The project is really keeping our London Underground um, operation going uh, without any disruption. And we achieved that with zero uh, operational disruption, not stopping the train or slowing the train down at all. Um, well, the judges are going to be quite messy when they come back, back out, so that will show you how <laughs> difficult it is. Uh, they're going to enter into a live sewer and uh, a lot of uh, mess inside and uh, nobody would like to really enter. Hopefully our overall will do the job and protect us from uh, all the nasties. So my name's Steve Neighbour, I'm a Chartered Civil Engineer. I work with um, Track Partnership and we replace the track and the ballast and the infrastructure that, that enables the trains to run around London on London Underground. And this is Earl's Court where we delivered a blockade, uh, a, a long period of works. It was an interesting experience, it's the first major blockade that I've been part of because I've only started here a year ago as a project engineer and it was quite an eye-opener to see so many people working so hard together. As Track Partnership, we're focused on innovation, and one of the things we've done is engineer every product we have for quicker speed. If we can install it quicker, we install more, which means that we don't have to close the railway for painful possessions and take it away from Londoners to travel to work. Tunnel lining in London normally is built in London clay and they're normally bolted cast iron lining. In 1970s, um, there was an ingenious idea to actually use non-bolted precast concrete segments in, in place of uh, cast iron and that is to increase productivity on site when they were building it. Unfortunately for us, between Bond Street to Baker Street, we've got some complex geology in the soil, which is what we call Lambeth Group. The, the way the soil acts around the tunnel uh, is structurally is not the same as other places. It's a Jubilee line, it's one of the busiest lines in London, and that runs every morning from half five till, till gone midnight, and we couldn't impact service. Uh, the Jubilee line would cripple London as a as a efficient city, um, so to do such an intrusive activity in three and a half hours every evening is, is phenomenal. It's, it, it's, it's such a robust project for the timescales we put operate in. This project has the potential to make a real difference to road safety, not just in London, but in cities and other areas across the UK. 
What's been so great about it is an entire industry has come together to tackle the issue of vulnerable road user safety and reduce the risk its activities have on um, collisions with cyclists, pedestrians and other road users. By doing this, it can make a real difference to the quality of life of Londoners, reducing the number of collisions, accidents on our road and um, showing greater social responsibility for their activities and what, how that impacts on the environment in which they're operating. The Victoria Line is a, a very challenging environment being deep level tube under, under London uh, and that presents quite a lot of constraints and it's quite warm down there. So when we set up this project which was to run more trains at higher speeds the risk was that that would create more energy use and that would therefore add to the heat underground which is uncomfortable for passengers. So our challenge was to deliver that but without using more energy. I think what makes our scheme so unique is its sustainability. Now that's a word that's used quite a lot but the way I like to think of it is the triple bottom line approach. Economic sustainability, environmental sustainability and social sustainability. We're very proud of what we've achieved because we've taken a very complex set of systems and trade-offs and we believe we've delivered a really good value for money outcome for London. The Kingston Grid redevelopment project was very important. It was a brownfield site in the middle of Kingston, which wasn't of much use to the community. It's been redeveloped into a useful um, area. At first, it was thought that it wasn't possible or appropriate to build over an open terminal substation. It's the first time it's been done in the UK. We and the developers are looking at using the knowledge and experience gained from this development to see if it can be used in other areas around the country. I am Keith Scott, I'm the project manager for Warren Bridge. I look after the maintenance of all the infrastructure within Surrey. It's a very simple solution to a very complex problem of getting a new bridge right in the heart of a very busy urban area, still looking after the environment with the swans and the ducks that are here. It's the first road bridge since the QE2 bridge over 20 years ago across the Thames. Um, it's an iconic art structure. Uh, it's been built with the community in mind, both the travelling, vehicle, pedestrian, cyclists and river traffic. It's a single span now opening up the river frontage and the whole construction project was built so that the people of Walton, Shepparton and travelling through can interact with the site. It's opened up the whole environment, the iconic structure of the bridge being constructed and right throughout has meant people have now come to this venue to see the bridge but also opening up business opportunities within the communities. We are here in the centre of London, in the centre of this great metropolis and an urban community such as this is utterly dependent on the civil engineering uh, that keeps the city running and our engineers are working building new, maintaining, upgrading continuously. Much of what they're doing is being done without the public knowing. Yes, every now and then we get disturbed, but actually most of the time it is amazing how they are keeping our systems operating. And we're talking about transport, we're talking about water, we're talking about energy, we're talking about buildings. It's a magnificent work that's being done. <laughs>